Okay, so here's a theorem, and this will complete our discussion of elementary matrices. A square matrix A is invertible if and only if A is a product of elementary matrices. So two things are worth mentioning here. So elementary matrices are the building blocks of invertible matrices, just like, as an analogy, just like the prime numbers are the building blocks of integers. So a matrix is invertible only if it can be expressed as a product of elementary matrices. And if you remember, there's one other thing about finding the inverse of a matrix. The idea was to augment a matrix A with I, row reduce A, and if A can be row reduced to I, whatever happens to I becomes the inverse of A. So a question is, well, why does this work? Why is this true? Well, look here in an example that will answer all these questions. And the proof in generality is just a copy-paste of this example. So here's the example. We'll say express. And we'll take here a 2 by 2 matrix, but this works for any square matrix. So express A. And we'll take the matrix 1, 4, 3, 5. So express this matrix as a product of elementary matrices. So let's just first find the inverse, keeping track of each of our row operation, and then we'll see how we can introduce elementary matrices. So let's start. We have a 2 by 2 matrix here. So we take A, 1, 4, 3, 5, and we augment A with I. Since A is 2 by 2, we use the 2 by 2 identity matrix. And let's just start row reducing. We already have a leading 1 here, so let's do row 2 minus 3 row 1, and we'll call this Rho, the Greek letter R, 1 for our first row operation, and we do row 2 minus 3 of row 1. So let's complete this row operation. We are only changing the, sec uh, the second row, so we can recopy the first row. So 1, 4, 1, 0. And now let's perform the row operation. 3 minus 3, 0. 5 minus 3 times 4, 5 minus 12 is negative 7. 0 minus 3 times 1, negative 3. 1 minus 0, 1. All right, so let's multiply now row 2 by negative 1 over 7. So this is our second row operation. And we do negative 1 over 7 of the second row. Again, we are only changing row 2, so you can recopy the first row. So 1, 4, 1, 0. And now we multiply the second row by negative 1 over 7, so we'll get 0, 1, 3 over 7, negative 1 over 7. And we are almost done the row reduction. Now we've reached the bottom row, and we introduce above each leading one a 0. So this will be our third and final row operation, and we do row 1 minus 4 of row 2. So the matrix A will now become I. We are only changing the first row. We can recopy the second row. So 3 over 7 negative 1 over 7. And now let's apply the row operation. Row 1 minus 4 row 2. So let's look at this one first. 0 minus 4 times negative 1 over 7 will give us plus 4 over 7. And 1 minus 4 times that, well this will give us 1 minus 12 over 7, but 1 is 7 over 7. So 7 minus 12, negative 5 over 7. 
And now we're done with the reduction, right? The matrix A was reduced to I, and I was reduced to this matrix. If you remember, the algorithm says the following. If you were able to row reduce A to I, then A is invertible, and whatever happened to I as you were reduced, this will become A inverse. And we can rewrite A inverse if we factor a negative 1 over 7. And you'll see why in a second, negative 1 over 7. This will give us the matrix 5, negative 4, negative 3, positive 1. And why did I factor negative 1 over 7? It's just to remind you of the shortcut formula we have for a 2 by 2 matrix, right? This is A, B, C, D, and the shortcut formula was the inverse of the matrix is 1 over A, D minus B, C. That's 5 minus 12, that's minus 7, so 1 over negative 7 is negative 1 over 7. And the trick was to interchange A and D, so 1, 5 becomes 5, 1, and then to negate the other two entries, so 3, 4 becomes negative 3, negative 4. So you didn't have to do this, but that's just to remind you of the shortcut formula we have for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. The question now is, well, okay, now that we have found the inverse of A with row reduction, how do we then get A as a product of elementary matrices? Well, let's see, for each row operation, we have a corresponding elementary matrix. So let's build, for each operation, the respective elementary matrix. So in each case, since A is a 2 by 2 matrix, we start with the 2 by 2 identity matrix in each case for each row operation. And we apply to I the corresponding row operation, row 1, row 2, and row 3. And let's see what we get. So this was row 2 minus 3 row 1, so row 1 stays the same. And now we do row 2 minus 3 row 1 to i, so 0 minus 3 times 1 is negative 3. And we'll left with, here with the 1. And this is our first elementary matrix, we'll call this E1. Row 2 here was multiplying the second row by negative 1 over 7, apply this to i, and you will get 1, 0, 0, negative 1 over 7, and this is our second elementary matrix. And finally, the third row operation will yield the third elementary matrix. Here, we do row 1 minus 4, row 2. So row 2 stays the same, 0, 1. Row 1 minus 4, row 2 will give us 1, negative 4. And this is our third and final elementary matrix. The question is now, well, what do we do with this? Well, let's go back to our reduction. And you'll see very simply how, just by going through each row operation and looking at the corresponding elementary matrix, we get the product factorization basically for free. So let's look at our two matrices. This was A and this was I, right? So let's write this over here. Our first matrix on the left is A, and our second matrix on the right was I. So what did we do? Well, we took A and I and applied the first row operation directly onto them. But you know that you can get the same result if instead of applying row 1 directly onto A and I, you multiply both on the left by E1. So if you multiply A by E1 on the left, it will bring you from here to here, and you can verify. If you multiply I by E1 on the left, it will bring you from here to here, and again you can verify. Let's keep going. We apply the second row operation to go now from here to here, and here to here. We can get the same result if we instead multiply on the left by E2. And now, we are here. And finally, 
we apply the third row operation that brings us from here to here, and we can instead multiply on the left by E3 to bring us to the same result. And now we're here. So you see, if you take A and you apply row 1, then row 2, then row 3, you get to I. Well, that's the same thing as if you take A, then multiply by E1, then by E2, then by E3. So the result is I. And the same can be said of I. We take I, we apply row 1, we get here. We apply row 2, we get here. We apply row 3, and we get this matrix. Well, we can get the same result if we start with I, multiply on the left by E1, then by E2, then by E3, and the result is A inverse. And why do we know this is A inverse, right? We're not supposed to know this. Well, look at this equality here. We have that this matrix, E3 to E1 times A, equals I. So this matrix cancels A via multiplication. Therefore, this matrix must be A inverse. And if you look here, well, what you have, and you'll see why we can claim that this actually is A inverse, this is E3, E2, E1 times I, but E1 times I, that's just E1. So this is simply E3, E2, E1, and again, E1 times I, that's just E1. So you see from the first equality, E3 times E2 times E1 times A equals I, so this matrix must be A inverse. And with the second part of our reduction, we get that E3, E2 times E1 ends up being the last matrix on the right, and we know that this is actually simply A inverse. So now we have our product. Well, at least we have a product for A inverse. So we can write this down and then see how we can get the product for A from the product of A inverse. So let's now write A inverse as a product of elementary matrices. All right, so A inverse, we have just found it right here. It's negative 1 over 7 times 5, negative 4, negative 3, 1. And now we have our product. A inverse equals E3 times E2 times E1. And we know all of these three matrices, right? E3 is the matrix 1, negative 4, 0, 1. E2 is 1, 0, 0, negative 1 over 7. And finally, if we move up, E1 was just 1, 0, negative 3, 1. And there you have it, at least for A inverse. We have decomposed A inverse, which is this matrix, as a product of three elementary matrices. So this is E3 times E2 times E1. Well, how do we get the product? Because the question originally was expressing A, not A inverse, but A as such a product. Well, we already have the answer. Think of it. We have the product for A inverse, right? A inverse is E3, E2, and E1. Well, the simplest way to get from A inverse A is just to invert both sides. Both sides are equal, therefore they have the same inverse, which implies that, well, the inverse of A inverse is just A, and you know how to invert the product. You have to invert each matrix, but completely reverse the order of the product. So this will be the last matrix inverted, so E1 inverse, times the second matrix inverted, E2 inverse, times the third matrix inverted, E3 inverse. Now here's where you have to be clever about this. Right? You already know what E3 is, what E2 is, and what E1 is. Now you have to find the inverse of each matrix. Now there are two possibilities here. You could use a shortcut formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix, or you could once again find the inverse of each one by row reduction. 
but that's way too much work, and it's even worse if these were 3x3, three 4x4, three, four four or bigger. The idea is, if you remember, to invert an elementary matrix, all you have to do is to invert the row operation. All right, so let's remind us of what A was. A was the matrix 1, 4, 3, 5. equals. Well, E1 inverse. Well, how did we build E1, right? We took I and applied row 1 to it, and that was row 2 minus 3 row 1. Well, to invert E1, we just have to invert row 1. What's the inverse of adding to row 2, or subtracting, sorry, 3 row 1 to row 2? Well, it's adding 3 row 1 to row 2. And of course, that will change the negative 3 to a positive 3. So E1 inverse is just 1, 0, positive 3, 1. And there you have E1 inverse. Let's move up. We need E2 inverse now. Well, how do we construct E2? Well, we multiplied row 2 by negative 1 over 7. Well, how do you undo this transformation? You multiply row 2 by negative 7, because negative 7 times negative 1 over 7 is 1. And if we multiply row 2 by negative 7, we get the matrix 1, 0, 0, negative 7. Now we have E2 inverse. And finally, E3 inverse. Well, how did we construct E3? All right, we took i and we added uh, again, sorry, we subtracted 4 row 2 to row 1. Well, to undo this, we just simply have to add 4 row 2 to row 1. So, of course, this will just change a negative 4 for a positive 4, and we'll get 1, 4, 0, 1. And there you have it. A equals E1 inverse times E2 inverse times E3 inverse, and we have decomposed A as a product of elementary matrices. Just as you could say the number 6 is 2 times 3, or the number 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, or the number 15 is 3 times 5. Just as, right, these are all prime numbers, just as the prime numbers are the building blocks for integers, Elementary matrices are the building blocks for invertible matrices. Because as we've just said before, a matrix is invertible if and only if it is a product of elementary matrices. The only difference, and this is worth mentioning, that prime factorization is unique, but factoring a matrix is invertible as a product of, of elementary matrices is not necessarily unique. If you had row reduced, the matrix A using a different sequence of row operations, you would have obtained a different sequence of elementary matrices, and you would have expressed A as a different product of elementary matrices. So just keep this in mind. On a problem sheet, when you row reduce to express a matrix as a product of elementary matrices, you may use different row operations than I have used, and you may end up with a different decomposition. It does not mean your answer is wrong. There are actually several possible answers.